my next guest, he is an actor. He will be, you can actually catch him on a new show coming out on Stars this summer entitled Heels. He'll be starring alongside uh, Stephen Amell and various other actors on that program. Please welcome onto the show, Robbie Ramos. How you doing, Robbie? Good, brother. Thanks, Jose, for having me on, bro. Hey, it's been good, man. Uh, finally, man, you know, we've talked about this for a couple months. And, yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> so, been off, been off with it, yeah. No, I mean, life has been very busy, man. Glad we're able to do it right now, man. Uh, you know, it's a good time right now. Um, you know, you're back in your spot over there in Miami, correct? Yep. Yeah, I'm back over here. Uh, just got in last uh, Tuesday, man. On Tuesday, I got in and uh, we finished. We wrapped on, on Heels on uh, Friday, man. Oh, man, th this is awesome, brother. Well, how have you been, man? More than anything, man. So you just wrapped the show. You're moving. You're moving right now. Uh, you're settling back in, man. Transitions kind of, you know... I'm not going to say they suck, but no one likes transition periods, man. How, how has that been going for you? Dude, you know, what's crazy is that with the, with the career I'm in, bro, it's a constant transition always, man. Okay. So it's really been like trying to get used to it, man. I mean, look, I, I, I've lived in New York, uh, but I'm, I've always been back and forth to Miami. And then, you know, I have moved to LA January of 2020 um, before the pandemic and, and then the pandemic went down and then I had to come back to Miami and then fucking, you know, so life has been a transition for the past 10 years that I've been doing this, dude. But no doubt it's been a different experience now with this with this pandemic, man. But things are good, dude. Thank God. Awesome, brother. So you are an actor and you've been doing this for a while. How has the pandemic been for you, man? Especially like, on, I mean, you're set to handle your lifestyle a certain way and then... COVID hits and it just changes everything. Oh, well, yeah, it was, it was, um, one of the scariest things ever, man. You know, um, as it is, there's no uncertain, there's no certainty in this career and you throw a pandemic in and it's basically, I mean, you're just hope, you know, praying that shit is going to open back up. And I was out there in LA. Uh, I had been there for only about two months, man, when the pandemic hit in March. Yeah. Uh, and the quarantine started and all that shit. And, and um, so, you know, it's been tough, dude. It's been tough. And before I booked heels, I was broke and didn't know what the hell was going to happen. And, and was the career even going to be a thing? We didn't know, yeah. you know, we didn't know where this was going, man. If, if the industry was even going to open back up. Again. Yeah, no, no, uh, for sure. It's a very scary thing, you know? Um, so it's funny. So I was, telling my friends like hey i think this is getting pretty serious around like i think pre like a little bit before march like a couple of weeks before march and yeah. you know you start hearing the rumblings and i'm telling people like oh i, I told my close friends hey guys get ready because you know what this is gonna be kind of scary and I have, I have a buddy of mine in new york who oh. is in the medical field and he was telling me hey man you know it's it's, it's stock up brother because it's gonna it's gonna get rough so yeah. I did, and no one would listen, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> seriously, no one would listen to me, believe it or not. And then uh, I think things started getting serious as you just started seeing people with masks. Because, yeah. I mean, again, you don't know this thing. You don't know how serious this is. So, you know, when the NBA, I don't know if you remember that incident with the NBA where yeah, dude, Rudy positive, Gobert. Yeah, Rudy Gobert and everything yeah. shut down. I think that's when, like, everyone's attention was, was caught on. Yeah. Like, oh, crap. Yeah. Like, you know, this is some serious stuff we're in, you know, uh, how was that? How was going into like that lockdown thing for you? Like, what was your thought? I mean, at the very beginning, because it was very unknown, it was unknown territory for us. Totally, man. I mean, we thought it was going to be a two week thing, right? I mean, yeah. A month thing so, at the most. Yeah. So, so when we heard about that, I mean, I was, I had been filming this, this show called snowfall mm -hmm. and it was going to be three episodes. Uh, and, and we were going to film in LA and Mexico uh okay. and we shot only one day bro on the I, I, of my of my scenes i only shot one day they had shot other scenes and, and that kind of thing but then production shut down i got an email from my you know agent just letting me know hey you know this has shut down i and then i i, I remember having a conversation with my reps like hey guys like you know what should i do because you know how long is this shutdown going to be for Obviously, they had no idea, but they yeah. they felt similar to you, which is like, yo, this is a long haul, right? So, uh, I decided to come down to Miami, and uh, and I was like, oh well, I'm, I'm, I'll just be there two weeks, but I'd rather be the two weeks with my family, you know, yeah, rather than sure. be out there. And uh, 
Uh, and then it turned into this long, <laughs> you know, year later, we're still at it, bro. Yeah, brother. I mean, it's, it's intense. I mean, a lot of people are still wearing face masks, you know. Well, I don't, I don't know how, how it is over there uh, up in Miami. But uh, here in San Antonio, uh, people are still wearing masks. You know, I have. Oh, here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I have, a, you know, I have, I have a couple of friends that uh, are up in the Dallas area and other little towns, man, where they've. Uh, they told me that a lot of people aren't wearing masks anymore. It's crazy. Yeah, the smaller the town, it feels like. Uh, when I was up there in Georgia, uh, I would go to like the little towns that would, that are around Atlanta. Yeah. And those seem to be a little looser with the regulations and things like that. But Atlanta was still, you know, masks and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But there's levels to it, right? I mean, LA is like completely shut down. New York and and those spots are completely still kind of uh, really rough to get around. And then Miami's a little looser, you know. But yeah. yeah. Now for you, Robbie. So what did you do during quarantine, man? Like, I mean, I'm assuming you're thinking about work, obviously. Whether hey. Is it going to work? Is it going to plan out for you? Is the industry going to open up for you? And I mean, it's a very scary situation, obviously, because obviously we need money. The world goes around with money and you income yeah. coming in. How was that? How did you handle that? Uh, during and I, I started to just like kind of, um, uh, so I'm, I'm very into podcasts and things. And okay. I kind of run up on a couple guys like Wim Hof. I don't know if you've heard of Wim Hof. Uh, no. uh, dude, he, he, you got to look into him, but he has a breathing technique yeah. and he does a lot of work with cold therapy. So you get into like a, a, you know, a cold plunge or a cold bath and these kind of things. And it's, and it's meant to kind of, um, re, you know, restructure the way you're thinking. You, you got to focus in, you got to concentrate uh, to be able to deal with the cold, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and in a way, bro, it, it starts to affect your, your nervous system. And, and, and it helped a lot with the anxiety that I had at that okay. time. Um, got heavy into also Sam Harris meditation. Uh, just, I had to find another way to kind of um, deal with my anxiety. I couldn't work. You know what I mean? It's not like I, there's anything I could have done work-wise to, you know, maybe write, but I couldn't write, bro. I was so anxious. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, it, it was, it was rough, dude. It was rough. And, and, and then I think maybe so, it was July, I think, where, no, Ju yeah, July, I got the uh, the self-tape for Heels, and then, then obviously, everything changed, you know. I, I booked Heels a month after the that self-tape, um, and my life completely changed, bro. Thank God, dude. I don't know what I would have done, man. It, 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 in a way, it saved my... <laughs> It saved my life, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, not to be dramatic about it, but for real, bro. I mean, my career was not anywhere near where I wanted it to be beforehand. Um, I had done a lot of theater, dude, in New York and a lot of plays for free. And, uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I just, it came at the best, the best time for me, dude. Now, I'm assuming a lot. Of, so, as, as an actor for you, for you, I'm assuming the process has definitely changed when you're auditioning for a role. Is that fair? Oh, well, you With mean because of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now everything's Zoom, dude, how we're doing right now. Uh, basically, they'll, they'll send you a self-tape. I don't know if you know what a self-tape is, but it's basically yeah. putting yourself on, on tape, right? You record yourself doing these scenes, you know what okay. I'm saying? So that'll be the initial audition. And then sometimes they'll do a Zoom like we're doing now, okay. and I'll do the scene, you know, with a reader on the other end, reading the other, the other side of the scene, the other character. And that's how the callbacks are do are being done now, which is um, for the actor. It's terrible, dude. Cause I, I, I like to be in the room with somebody. There's a different energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of, you know, Oh, I mean, if we're doing this interview in person, there's a different energy, man. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling your energy in the room, you know, where yeah. uh, there's less, you know, cause it, there's a little lag in the, in the in the in the thing you know what i mean Depending it's on wi-fi and all that <laughs> right dude so yeah it, it, it's changed in those ways i mean i i'm hoping it'll go back to the old way of auditioning at some point no de definitely definitely now what's the best way to describe life as an actor just in general for the audience that may not know or just would be interested in knowing yeah wow man how to describe the life of an actor. I mean, 
like I said, bro, the life of an actor is in constant transition, man. Because, you know, even if you are a working actor, which is, you know, 1% of the, the acting uh, population, uh, if, even if you are a working actor, you're constantly changing roles, dude. You're, you're going from playing the wrestler to a guy maybe with schizophrenia or, or a Mexican cop or these kind of roles. And, and, and so you're in constant transition. You're moving all over the country, all over the world. There's an actor on the show called uh, Alexander Ludwig, who was on the show called Vikings. Yeah. And he was telling me, you know, that that role was a blessing for him. But then he spent, I don't know how many years in Ireland, you know what I mean? And shooting 11 months out of the year. Yeah. Right. Because there's 20 something episodes on heels. We get lucky. There's only eight episodes. We basically shoot them in five. Well, we shot this one in more months because of COVID, but of usually you shoot them four or five months. And then you can go do something else. But imagine you book a role, dude, where okay. you're doing 22 episodes. You're one of the leads. You're in almost every shot. And they shoot 11 months out of the year. I mean, that, that's a tough job, bro. And you're away from family. So, you know, the, the life of, a, of an actor is, isn't an easy one, bro. You know, I think sometimes there's a misconception about Hollywood and like, uh, how glamorous it is and and it could be there's there's sides of it that are glamorous but then there's there's sides of it that are it's just a grind bro like any other thing you know i'm i'm sure i feel like sports is 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 like that too you know yeah for sure like when you say uh trans it's everything's like a transitional period and you're right see i'm thinking transitional period is just like you know the travel schedule that you have to do but I didn't. Okay. So, I mean, and it's stating the obvious, right? You're always changing roles. Like you're, you got to have like the right mindset to be able to do those kind of things. I mean, it's very, what is it? It's a, it's a heavy mental exercise. I think, I well, think, that, man. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You got to love it, bro. I mean, if not, you, you don't make it, bro. Cause there's, there's, and then, you know, we're not even getting, that's if you're working, bro. Yeah. And <laughs> We're talking about before that, where you're just like getting rejected all the time, dude, you know? Yeah. Now for you, Robbie, what got you into acting, man? It's an interesting career. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I, so I played baseball since I was five years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And I played all through high school and I could have gone and played like at a Juco, you know, a junior college or, or somewhere in freaking middle yeah. Middle America or, or, or Lakeland, Florida, or one of these weird spots. But I decided not to, dude. You know, I, I, I had potential as a kid, and, and I had a good curveball. And I, you know, but I, I, I didn't throw hard, and I was a righty. I was in a lefty, you know, where a lefty can kind of get away with putting it in spots. Do you know baseball or, or is, that, is that a little, a, a little bit, a little okay. bit, not, not too much. I usually yeah. do a lot of uh, basketball and be uh, UXC NFL stuff. Right. Right. Well, yeah. So, you know, I had, I was okay, but I wasn't great. And, uh, and then, uh, after high school, when I didn't go pursue the, the baseball thing any longer, I started just kind of like look, searching for what it is that I, I like to do. Yeah. Uh, and I started writing things down, bro. One of the, one of the things that helped me a lot was writing my thoughts down because so many times our thoughts are, are up here and we're, we're, we're not sure exactly how we feel about things. You know, you might have duality in the way you think about a certain thing or whatever. And so I started writing things down and kind of keeping a journal in a way and that shit. And when I would read that, I'd be like, Holy shit, that's what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause I was being honest with myself. And, uh, and I started to kind of uh, look for things that I was interested in. Psychology was one of them. And then acting was the other one. And I took an acting class and um, I had a scene, you know, like they give you a monologue, right? So a monologue is basically, you know, like a chunk of dialogue where there's no other character in the scene. I mean, he's in the scene, but there's no dialogue back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of how acting class starts is they give you a monologue and you kind of work through that first, right? You memorize the monologue, then you perform it. So I was performing this monologue for the first time and I was able to channel maybe you know, all that anger and frustration and shit that I had from baseball and kind of failing at that. Yeah. And I was able to channel it through this monologue, right? And, and express myself. And I remember doing the monologue, bro. And I felt the classroom, like, just kind of like, oh, shit. 
you know, they mm-hmm. took the moment they really saw me, dude. And they were like, holy fuck, because, you know, this guy's got potential. And I felt that power, dog. It was like a drug, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine it's how a, an athlete feels when they fucking do something that's amazing that everyone's kind of like, holy shit. Yeah. It's that power, you know? A highlight. Like a, a highlight. Drug, yeah, no, no, no. It's, 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 uh, it's a huge high, bro. And so yeah. then I've been chasing that shit ever since, you know? Then I, I you know, from acting class, I went to another acting class and studied a little, a little different technique and, and 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 i'm sure like a lot of the mma guys you got you have on it's it's you start taking techniques from certain people yeah. that you admire you know and different teachers and, and things like that and and that's how i started bro i just started uh i just went all in on it though bro all in there was no plan b ever you know okay so you all, all in on there and in, bro. i mean i'm sure i started in miami i started down here in miami uh And and you can imagine how my friends and my family were like, what the fuck, dude? Out of nowhere, I just took on this different career, dude. Yeah. And uh, and and it, you know, everyone was a little shocked by it, but my family, thankfully, was behind me, bro. Um, and so, but my friends were like, what the fuck's this guy doing? You know, like, I mean? oh, like I want to be an actor. I know. Imagine, I oh, imagine, imagine. And people, uh, uh you like. Definitely know what you feel, man. I was very, so when I, we were talking a little bit earlier, when I started doing, I started YouTube, man. I yeah. told myself, all right, man, I did like my very first recording. And, you know, I, I don't come from like a media background. I never took uh, like, because I guess like in high school, there's like acting classes. I don't even know if they're yeah. called acting classes. They're, I mean, there's some sort of like class. Never mm-hmm. did that. Never or like production TV. Yeah. Production. Like that yeah. kind of stuff. I never. And, and, you know, believe it or not, I never took like any kind of like journalist classes, never went to like media, never yeah. talked in front of a microphone, but ever. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I said, you know, but I really want to do this. And I know that I'm a good talker. I just know I'm a good talker. So I can definitely relate to you whenever I, I still remember po- posting my very first Instagram and Facebook post. Hey, guys, you know, I'm starting a sports show, a sports podcast show like on YouTube and yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, like these are people that I haven't talked to in like 10 years, five years, or that I talk to regularly. It's like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> you know, like what the hell is this? This is so random. And it's de- it's definitely not the background I have now. Oh, okay. de- definitely not. It's uh, you know, it was a smaller background. The lighting wasn't as great, the camera wasn't great, the microphone wasn't as great. So I'm like, oh, look at me starting here, and you definitely have to want it, right? But bro my i get i can only imagine some of my some of the, some of the people's reactions maybe they won't tell me like what the reaction no. was but i mean you're like going through your phone and you're like well, what the hell is this guy doing you know that's, what that's they they, they might thing. tell you in a few years man they'll be like dude you know when you started that shit i was like what the fuck is this <laughs> i know right is he on drugs what's going on with jose bro? yeah oh now they're like what the, what the hell is this man dude and i you know the worst part was i'm like i had never like shot anything either so i'm like oh what the hell is this Uh-huh, uh-huh. the camera and stuff and just it's a lot of research man but the definitely good thing is that, that now with youtube and and you can search anything bro and learn how to do it De- definitely man so what was your first what is it like audition tape that you had to do you still remember your first one yeah dude so my first audition was at miami Dade college was where i started acting and they had a play there it was called uh come blow your horn <laughs> uh <laughs> That was a Neil Simon play that was like, it was written like in the 1960s or 50s or something. Yeah. That's so far from removed from who I am, dude. I'm like, you know, Cuban, Miami kid. Uh, and these guys are talking like 1950s New York type okay. of shit. And, and, and I went into this audition and, um, bro, somehow, somehow I booked the lead in this, in this play. But why do you say somehow? Dude, somehow, because that's unheard of, you know? I mean, yeah. there was a bunch of kids there that that had been doing acting since they were little kids, you know? And mm-hmm. now, you know, to, the, here's kind of the thing. It's kind of like, well, it's not the same, but it's like walking onto like a basketball team in college and, and then you hadn't done basketball your whole fucking life. And, and then you make a starter? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, It's kind of like that, okay? Not 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 the same, but it, it, 
it's kind of in that vein where, you know, the whole theater department there was like real theater kids and they had been doing acting their whole lives. And now I'm booking this lead in this play. It's completely unheard of, you know? Okay. And um, I wasn't even a part of the theater department at this point. I just had an acting class that I was taking. It wasn't even a major or a minor of mine. Okay. Uh, so I booked this thing and I have so many lines, bro. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. Luckily, I had an acting coach at that time, which is the first acting coach I ever had. Her name was Anna Panero. And she went through the whole script with me, bro. Every single line of that script. And we, 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 would, we would write our intentions of, of, of each uh, 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 line, you know what I mean? To, to provoke, to seduce, to intimidate, to right. So she was breaking it down for me in a way where I, can, I, I could perform it. Okay. And I was doing that on the side, bro. So it was like rehearsals during the day. And then at night I would go take classes with Anna. And I somehow got through it, bro. I remember the first day, or the, the first day we, we had an audience and, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm in the first scene and there's curtains right in front of the stage and the curtains start opening up okay. and I, my friends and family are all in the audience, right? And I hear my boy yell out, go Roby! <laughs> <laughs> like if we were at a fucking baseball game or yeah. some shit, this guy is screaming my fucking name before the, the play starts. And that's how it started for me, dude. And from there on, I was, I was hooked, man. That first night of performing on a stage was, I mean, it was, um, it was life changing, bro. It was, you know, again, that drug, dude. That, Keep that, that, that it's drug, a very bro. unique high. It is a very unique high, bro. It is, yeah. Uh, live theater is what I love the most, you know. And how long ago was this? That was 2009. It's more than 10 years then. Yep. And so it's so it now. 2009. And then I, I was 19 years old. Um, okay. And then I, I moved to New York at 21. So two years later, I moved to New York. I did a few plays here in Miami. Okay. Um, and I kept studying, you know, religiously. Uh, it's an art. Huh? It's an art. It is, dude. It is. It's like anything, bro. You gotta, you gotta, you, the only way to do, uh, to learn it is by doing it. You know, the same shit you're doing, bro. The yeah. only way to do, learn how to do podcasts is by fucking doing them. There's no, you can read books, you can watch YouTube videos. It'll show you how to start. Okay. Yeah. But at some point, you got to put in that work and those hours. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you got to be able to, I guess, feel comfortable and to talk to people. And I remember, you know, I asked because uh, we, we were talking about nerves and stuff before. Um, and I'd, I'd spoken to Mike Bond. Mike Bond is an MMA journalist. OK. You know, he does a lot of like the UF he pretty much does like a lot of the UFC coverage. He's actually going to be I don't know if you knew, but Jake Paul's fighting uh, Ben Askren this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No yeah so he's, he's actually doing coverage for that fight uh, this weekend. Shout out to Mike Bond. But um, I remember I think the most like one of the things I asked Mike is, did the nerves ever go away? And he's like, you know what, man, they'll come up. If it, they'll come up randomly at times whenever you talk to somebody. But ultimately, you just got to remember to stand your ground and, and it's right. just a conversation, you know? Yeah, dude. How old are you, Jose? Yeah, I'm actually 27, man. You're 27, okay. Yeah, man. 20, yeah. 27. So, you know, still still young, right? Yeah, still, yeah, still you're, you're, still you're right young. there. Still, yeah, still yeah. Young. <laughs> I still say I'm, I'm young. I still not not a, not a, haven't hit the, the big 3-0 yet, but, you know, it's, right. it's it'll creep up. It'll creep, dog. I hit 3-0 <laughs> in, in 2020, bro. And it, yeah, it's funny, I'm still man. Still three zero, bro. But it's it's it creeps up on you, dog. Twenty seven to thirty is is quick, bro. Oh, de definitely. Uh, you know, my dad religiously he he's been doing this since I was uh twenty one. My dad will shoot me a text telling me happy birthday. Like whenever, you know, it's the next one after twenty one. He's like, it's one year closer to thirty, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So this past uh, last year, he texted me. He's like, you're getting close. Yeah. You're, you're not in the mid twenties anymore. <laughs> no, dog. <laughs> so, so yeah. it's it's yeah. uh it's definitely funny now. But now uh so Rob, so from the time you had your first uh role there uh yeah. back in 09 to now we're in 2021, you're on heels now, it's stars. Uh, I'm sure it's a different kind of feel for you right now. It's uh I'm assuming it's 
I guess the dream, right? Definitely, bro. Definitely. Um, and between that, you know, what's funny about this heels role and that role that I specifically spoke yeah. to you about in that theater was, uh, it, th both of those roles was me learning how to do something for the first time. Right. Yeah. So on stage, it's one thing on TV, it's a separate thing. And that's Definitely. where I'm learning how to work on uh, in, in front of the camera. I had done little things here and there, but when you go on a show and, and it's a, a one day on a show, you don't really learn enough. You know, you just kind of jump onto a moving train and you're going, this heels thing for me is a lot like that first theater gig for me, which was, bro, I'm, I'm trying to survive, dog. <laughs> I mean, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm like, dude, I'm just trying not to get fired, not to get fucking, you know, and 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 keep my shit together, man. And and deal with all those insecurities that you spoke about. Does the fear ever go away? Uh, I asked Chris Bauer, who who's one of the actors on 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 heels, and he's been on on the uh, the wire. True Blood, uh, a bunch of shit, man. He's worked with all the greats and, and he's been working for decades. And I asked him that exact question you asked that dude, which is, hey, man, does the fear ever go away? Yeah. And he said, it doesn't go away, but you learn how to manage it. Yeah. And and I think that's that's part of it, bro, is learning how to manage it. In the theater, it never went away from me, bro. I, I still have that fear when, I, when I'm going to do stage, but I learned how to manage it. So I think that's true, man. And um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of been, you know, that's kind of been the, the journey, bro. In between that first gig in theater and, and this heels thing, a lot of shit happened, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So it's crazy, though. People don't see all the work that you put into it. You know, no, like you said, no, of course people not. see the glamour. Oh, yeah. he's an actor, so he's got a lot of money. Yeah, right, right. No way. Whatever he wants. When he's not uh, work, working and acting, it's all driving in Maseratis and Porsches and right, 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 you know, right. a bunch of Brazilian steakhouses and, and whatnot. People don't people don't see that that kind of work that you put in, man. And no one truly sees it except for yourself most of the time, you know. Right, right. Family, my wife who's been with me from yeah. the beginning, man. Um, those are the people that know know what a what a grind it's been, you know. De uh, definitely. So I have a question for you, and I've always yeah. wondered this. So when you act, I'm, I mean, right. I'm assuming they give you a script, obviously. Yes. Right. And it's yeah. has your lines on there. Yeah. Do you have to like, is your, do you have to, I don't want to say memorize because there's, there's between memory and learning. You have to learn the entire thing all mm -hmm. at once, or is it broken up into sections or how does that work? No, nah, man. So again, theater and TV is different, but on TV, you know, they'll send you the script. And immediately I start memorizing the whole script. I mean, okay. whatever I can memorize, I like to get that shit down because uh, when we talk about fear, if you don't know your lines, bro, the fear is not going to let you fucking remember your lines on set. I mean, it's like you have to have them down, bro. Um, and, uh, and working on this show with Michael Malley, who's the showrunner, yeah. He did. He had another show called Survivor's Remorse, which was about uh, basketball. And LeBron James was a, a producer on it and, and LeBron's team and all them. Uh, he was the, the he, that was his previous show. Now he's show running heels. Uh, Mike throws things at you. You know, he'll say, hey, that line, instead of saying, um, instead of saying dish, I want you to say cup, you know, and that shit will fuck you up if, if you don't know your lines, because You've mem you know, you 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 you've memorized it a certain way, right? But you gotta know them so well that no matter what they throw at you, you can fucking improvise, you can you can take it and run with it. Um, so yeah, bro, but it is <laughs> it's yeah, see, rough. That not see not to me, that seems scary right there. Because it's one thing. <laughs> so it's scary when okay, so I used to think, okay, well, it's scary, like what if you can't know your lines, like you have to learn the whole thing, right? But now you're telling me that they throw stuff at you. Um, well, it depends. Yeah, it depends who you work with, you know. I mean, but it's like, a common thing, though, right? It is, bro. Okay. In a weird way, it is because it kind of frees you up a little bit, uh, where you're like, okay, I can be a little less uh, technical about the words. I can be more free with it, and 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 so in a way, it kind of frees you up. 
uh, and then on stage is a whole other thing. No, on stage, you need to have the whole play memorized from start to finish. And, and there's no calling for line or saying, oh, can we cut? You know, I, I forgot my line. There's none of that shit on stage. Uh, there's no fixing it. Yeah. No, brother. You got to you gotta run with it. Improv. If you forget lines, you have to just kind of bullshit your way through it until you fucking remember the lines. Yeah, it's, yeah. Dude, there's scary shit that has happened. And, and on stage in the same way, you know, I've had fucking roaches walk on stage and you got to deal with the roach on the stage as you're doing the scene. Uh, there's no calling cut, man. So anything that happens in the theater, you got to fucking know how to how to handle it. And it, it can oh, yeah. be scary, brother. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So, like, I think, so, like, is it a, so when I think of, let's just uh, say, like, you know, because I've, I've, um, I've been in the rent restaurant industry, like, if, you know, you're in, in a city and there's a restaurant that has, like, let's just say rats, for example, that's yeah. a pretty fast way to kill a reputation. Yeah. Now, would, like, forgetting lines and being consistently known as an actor that forgets lines, is that an easy way to just kill oh, yeah. your acting career right there? Oh, oh, it's over, dude. It's unless over. you're unless you're a seasoned actor and there's a name behind you and, and that kind of thing, then you might get away with uh, maybe a he doesn't up. memorize. Right. But if you're uh, an entry level actor and and you're just starting out and you're getting they're giving you a shot at this role and you don't know your lines, you're fucked, dude. They, they're going to they're going to fire you. Yeah. hundred percent. Jesus, man, that's easy. Oof. That's definitely a lot of pressure. You see, so it's not always glamorous, man. You know, right no, they, right bro, no. it's a lot of work. And dude, and 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 you know, the part that's that's tough is how to get started, bro, and how to start making a living at doing this. Um, like I said, bro, I lived in New York. I lived in a basement in New York. Uh, you know, one little window at the top corner of the room, uh, sleeping on an air mattress at some points of it. You know, uh, a futon that's broken, a fucking, you know, $20 in your bank account. You got to go eat at fucking 7-Eleven every fucking day and, and uh, taking the subway in New York to work at a at a valet and 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 not having any guarantee that it's going to pay off, Jose, like at all, brother. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's very challenging. But I guess, you know, at that point, you know, if everyone could do it, everyone would be doing it. Right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And you need a certain level of talent, dude. You know, I tell people, it's like, I was never going to make it as a baseball player. I just didn't have that level of talent to make it, you know? Um, I knew that as an actor, I did have, I do have a talent that, that is a little out of the ordinary, you know? Um, so that allowed me to take risks. But you're betting on yourself, bro. How many people have talent and don't fucking make it? I mean, the world is, is, full of those people um so it's a little bit of luck a little bit of talent a little bit of tenacity and and that kind of shit and and you know that's how you get through the hard times bro definitely and i think it's also you know a lot of drive that that has to get no, you through it no. as well now now for you how was the experience in heels like for you i mean you're working and it's again uh you know big network to me you know stars is pretty you know everyone knows what stars is and yeah. you're working with a, a lot of you know it looks like a great cast of actors you know james harrison former pittsburgh Steeler, on there yeah. Stephen yeah. ml which you know everyone knows that knows me you know i'm a huge Stephen ml fan yeah. watching arrow is one of is one of still one of my all-time favorite shows i still watch it believe it or not i still watch that season one and season two on there so you're working with Dude, you know, I, I, great people i yeah, 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 man. It's it's exactly what you said, bro. Dream come true. I mean, in all sense of that word, it's been a fucking dream. I mean, um, and then you know, we spoke a little about Michael Malley, but uh, it's like he, he, the guy. I mean, Michael Malley has made me feel so uh, comfortable on yeah. set. You know, it's not always like that, bro. Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of pressure on set. So you got to be ready up for all this shit. But I, I've i worked my my way up, man. You know, I, I spent the 10, 12 years doing theater for free and all this bullshit. So that now, when there is pressure on set, I can handle it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's been a complete dream, bro. And then working, you know, working with the stunt guys and the wrestling crew and, you know, I, I wasn't a, a wrestling fan yeah. to begin with, you know, so 
for me, it was really learning everything, bro. I was learning all these moves, all these different things, fucking um, terms and things that you, that 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 what is what a suplex that, is. Right, right, uh, right. These are all the things that we we had to learn about in preparing for heels, man. Um, and you know what ended up happening was I found a, a, a I, I found a, a love for wrestling, bro. I, I understand why people love it. I, I, I get it now. I never understood it though at all. I was like, dude, I don't get it. And, and now I do, bro. And, and watching the wrestlers, because uh, so I had a stunt double. His name is Zane. And talking to him about wrestling, and he, he's been an independent uh, professional wrestler for a long time, bro. And, 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 and just getting knowledge from him about how it's been for him his journey and his career and, 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 uh, all of that, dude, just taking all of that in. Yeah. It's just been amazing, bro. How, how was it like working with, uh, the cast on there? Dude, the cast has been, that's another thing. I mean, I've just, I feel like I've been spoiled, bro. Everyone from Steven all the way down to people that are, are just coming on for a couple of days. We got, we had CM Punk on there. Uh, CM Punk. Oh, I saw, so I saw Steven posted a picture with CM Punk. Yeah, dude. Just uh, the most humble dude. Super cool. Uh, you know, funny, bro. He's got that dry humor. And, and we spoke a lot about wrestling, actually, with him. Yeah. Man. I, I'm doing a podcast that, that's coming out with the show uh, with with Heels. Uh, and, I, and I sit down with CM Punk and we get into the, the wrestling stuff that he's been through, bro. And it's it's crazy. It's insane. Steven, yeah, man. Steven, Steven was, was great on set, bro. Seeing somebody see when I was talking to you about Alexander Ludwig and him doing all those seasons of Vikings, Steven has a similar thing, which is bro. He's been working fucking eight years as the number one on the show. And what I mean by number one is there's a call sheet. Uh, when, yeah. before you go on set, there's a call sheet and the call sheet is one through however many actors are on the show mm -hmm. and Steven was number one on that on, on arrow obviously he was arrow and to see like the way he is on set the way he works uh the confidence he has in in his ability to 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 perform in front of a camera i mean all those things are are, are things that me as a as a guy who's starting in tv i look at that bro and i and i admire that you know um and then, like you mentioned, James Harrison. James has never acted in his life, bro, okay. right? But he's fucking good, man. He's good on the show. And he and he was, he's always, you know, actually, you know, really cool guy, man. Cracking jokes, uh, uh, always kind of playful and shit. And, you know, he's got that angry persona in football, but uh, yeah. but he's uh, he was really more of like a, a teddy bear on set, bro. But did a you, teddy bear, you don't want to fuck with, though. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever watch, like, Vikings or Arrow? Nah, dude. I, I actually – I hadn't watched them. And I think that helped, you know, because uh, I didn't have – you know, I, I didn't go in thinking of them in any, in any way, you know. I, I could meet them for who they were and not for what they've done, you know. Okay. Um, so when you're working with them, it helps, you know, it helps to be that way because then that way you're just kind of meeting another human being. You're not meeting arrow, oh my God, arrow. <laughs> the <laughs> green arrow. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're not meeting these guys and that, similar with James, you know, I mean, I, I'm a football fan, but I'm, I wasn't like, you know, if I meet Conor McGregor and he's fucking in the scene with me, I'm going to be going nuts about it because I love Conor McGregor. Right. right? James, I hadn't really seen him, you know, he, uh, I'm 30, so 2000 to like 2012 was maybe where he was like really killing it in the NFL. Yeah, I, I didn't really watch, you know. I was more of a baseball guy and basketball and shit like that. I, although I had heard about his name, you know. Oh but yeah, crazy, crazy. You don't hear about his fuck. Yeah, but so so again, that I think that helped because I didn't have any preconceived notion of who he was. Um, no, I mean, de definitely. I mean, like, you know, I told you before, I mean, when I met Stephen and Mel, you know, no, no, no one knows this. I'll say this to the audience. I free, I, when I say I freaked out, but definitely like the <laughs> definition of being starstruck definitely hit me. 
you know, I, the guy made me forget my name, you know, like just by just meeting him and he was so nice and it's such an awesome experience, man. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I yeah. definitely, I think I like your take on that more, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And you can see people for who they are now. So I saw, so I saw you floating around, uh, around while you were filming with a Ric Flair belt. Uh, can you tell us what that was about? Oh, well that, so Steven actually started that, um, he had this, this Ric Flair belt and, and basically we pass it on from cast to cast. Uh, whenever we think somebody has done something extraordinary with an episode or something in their life or whatever, we give it to them as a, as a way to kind of show respect for their work, you know? Yeah. And so, so one of the times I got the belt and then I, I, I passed it on to somebody else, but I had the belt for, for a couple of weeks, but that was something Steven started actually. Yeah. Steven's a huge wrestling fan, bro. He's a, yeah, he's, he's yeah, done it. He's I done it. To hear him talk about wrestling because it's I, I, the passion for it is so obvious, you know. Yeah, for him, I remember watching him against uh, Christopher Daniels. I saw him at a, at a SummerSlam event. De you could definitely tell. So it didn't surprise me when I saw him book this show. I'm like, oh, okay, that's yeah, he's perfect. Totally something he would do. Yeah, it's right up his alley. He's perfect for it. I think I think you guys that are his fans are going to be blown away by the work he's doing, bro, because it's – the script is so good, dude. The script is so good. The way Pete Siegel and, and everyone in the camera department, like, just the way they're fucking shooting the show. Um, the wrestling scenes are artistic, bro. It's like Raging Bull uh, boxing scenes type of shit. I mean, it's really – it's really – yeah, I, I think people are gonna dig it, man. And no, and and fans sure. of Steven are are gonna love it. Yeah, you know, yeah. So you know what I like about uh, a show like this? You know, it's based on like what you told me. Like it's indie wrestling. It's independent scene wrestling for the audience that may not know what that means. And you know, believe it or not, Robbie, there's a lot of people. And like I grew up on WWE. That's you know the end yeah. all be all on what I grew up on. And now there's different uh, wrestling promotions going on, and. I grew up with people telling me that if you're not in WWE, you failed. Like it's the end all be all. Yeah. And that's it. And they're totally wrong. You know, it's right. de definitely not, you know, there's believe it or not, there's some wrestlers, man, that I I've met that are very, very happy at not being WWE because, you know, just being an independent wrestler gives them the freedom. Obviously a lot of the people that were in WWE that are in the independent scene have the name to take with them. Yeah. Obviously, bookings are a little bit easier, but the independency, man, it's such a grind, man. Yeah, dude. The, the independency is such a grind, man. Up, uh, we, McAllen, Texas, man, they have, yeah. you know, this thing called the Cine del Rey, which is where a lot of great independent wrestlers, you know, that are up and coming, that work hard, that, you know, are displaying talents, man. And that's what I like about the Indies. It's kind of like college football before the NFL or college yeah. basketball. Uh -huh. You know, you're seeing people laid on on the line because they want an opportunity and they're craving that. So it's it's very fun, I man. Connect with it, dude. I connect with it on another level because of what we spoke about earlier in terms of theater in New York, bro. It's the same exact shit. It's a grind, bro. Um, and one of the things about wrestling that I loved and I and I kind of made this connection was uh, performance art. You know, yeah. that's what it is, bro. That's what it is. And uh, so I got a newfound respect for it, no doubt. Now, have you seen any, like, uh, WWE match or any, like, wrestling match in specific that maybe stood out to you? Yeah. It's funny, dude. We we actually – I saw a Royal Rumble. Okay. Uh, with – and it was Ric Flair. I can't tell you what year it was. Maybe oh, 90. Year 31? Am I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was 92. 92, dude. That was fucking cool to watch, man. Again, because I I think if I had seen that before I started working on heels, I'd be like, ah, I don't get it, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, but because of like, you know, I've kind of just been educated on it. Um, I respect the fucking, the performance of it so much, bro. So much. And uh, so that that one stood out. And, uh, and, and you know who I, I dig too, bro, which... Maybe you you've heard of him. Maybe you haven't. Andy Kaufman. So I've uh, heard of Andy Kaufman. I, I did okay. heard of Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman was an actor and comedian, and he went into wrestling, bro. And he actually got kicked off the David Letterman show 
uh, because he was on there with uh, was Jerry, it? Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry Lawler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he slapped him. Brother. And they fought. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I was alive. I don't know if I was alive for that. <laughs> Me neither, dog. But I, I, I saw it. After, <laughs> I know. I saw it after, and and uh, it's all over YouTube, and and there's documentaries on Andy Kaufman that talk about it. And I was a huge Andy Kaufman fan because he's known for that shit of like you don't know if he's being real or he's being fake. They even think he faked his own death. You know what I mean? Jesus. Because he was such a fucking jokester and a trickster in that way. And, uh, and, and watching Andy do wrestling. And I think he, he actually, he had a match in the WWE with, with Lawler. Um, uh, bro. Yeah, it was, it was great dog. I love watching it. And, and, uh, and I, and I think of it as an art form, you know, you whether know, so people feel like that, I don't know, but no, no, for sure. I mean, I was joking around with uh, my boys, Mike and Jose, uh, it's another Jose, but yeah. I, I, we try to like, I'll try to like cut like a Ric Flair style promo with him. Just, you know, in a right. joking way, man. I would always yeah. tell him, man, Ric Flair's the man. Dude, he's the shit, bro. <laughs> he's so crazy. are so fucking good, dude. So <laughs> legendary, dog. And I love that the internet has now given him almost a new life with all the memes and the gifts of, of, of Ric oh, Flair. Woo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the 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 dance man, the step man. Oh, oh no, 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 no! He's funny. genius, bro. I I hope to meet him, man. And you know, I've been seeing interviews of his, and he's gotten very like emotional in some of these interviews. I don't yeah. know if you've seen him, bro. No, I actually haven't. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. You got to check out some of the recent like Ric Flair interviews. Super emotional and and vulnerable, and uh, so I'm I'm dying to meet that dude for sure. Yeah. Oh, Rick Riffler's awesome, man. Bro, you yeah. gotta check out Randy Orton versus Mick Foley. Oh, okay, boy. okay. Back oh, back. Mick Foley, dude. You know Mick is on the show too. Oh, Mick, Mick appeared on the show. Yeah, brother. He's on a couple episodes, I think. Uh, I didn't work with him specifically, but uh, he's doing a character on the show. And uh, Mick Foley, that's another dude that I yeah, yeah that I dig, bro. I like his style and I like his. His characters and shit, yeah. I'm telling you, man. His match against Randy Orton. Barbaric, I'm gonna check that out, man. Barbaric, that brother. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna check that out. It's it's so good, man. And you know, it's been um, what what is it? I mean, it's just again, it's a different. Even though it's barbaric, there's an art form toward towards it, you know. Oh no, hundred no, percent, yeah. And you just imagine so, like wrestling in front of like a crowd would probably be the same thing as acting in a theater, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's no nothing, nothing different about that except for like people are probably just screaming or going crazy exactly. and stuff like that, right? Exactly. I even have an idea of of turning, uh, of making a play uh, with a wrestling ring and just have so have the the audience around, almost like if you're gonna go see a wrestling match, yeah, or a wrestling show. And have it, and then you know, there's real wrestling, but then there's acting in between it, you know, because it's so theatrical, bro. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's completely theatrical, and it's it's built for storytelling, dude. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a bunch of similarities between them. Yeah, when we were shooting the the scenes that were wrestling scenes, that was one of the things I I was like, oh shit. All right, this is a theater. I know what the fuck to do here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So some of the wrestling shit, uh, when it comes to that side of it, not the not the the actual stunts and all that type of shit. I have mad respect for that. But I'm saying like the performing aspect of it, I felt at home there. You know, yeah. in the ring because it it felt a lot like theater to me. Well, you know, it, it is storytelling. No doubt about it. It is. It, it's it's a heavy storytelling. You know, you know, you have a good guy, you have a bad guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it, it's yeah, theater, bro. That. It's fucking theater. Yeah. Man, um, what was I gonna tell you? Uh, so it comes out this summer, right? Obviously, we'll get a release date later on in the future, right there, man. Uh, how long does it take to film an episode? A month. Pandemic area. A month. Yeah. Is it just because of the pandemic, or? Yeah, yeah, mostly. Well, yeah, like so for the show, we would shoot like one or two episodes at a time. And then if, if something happened in terms of COVID, like somebody got COVID or some shit, we might pull up a scene from episode six and start shooting it. Um, so, yeah, uh, but more, I know, I mean, two, two, three weeks to shoot an episode. Man, so it's a, it's a good long process. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, no. Bro, I got there in August 
and I left last week, April, April 12 or whatever it was. Did you get to check out any nice spots in uh, Georgia? Yeah, I loved it, bro. I love Georgia. Um, particularly like the little, the little towns around Atlanta. Um, there's a town called Alpharetta. I really loved Duluth, um, Marietta. I love all those small towns. That's why when you were talking about South Texas, I love small towns, bro. That peaceful vibe is my shit. Even though I also love New York, you know what I mean? So no, there's for sure. But but the small towns, I think when when I finally it's time to settle down somewhere, I think I'm gonna do it in a small town for sure. Oh man, you gotta check out the Rogue Grand Valley then. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I drove past, I drove through Texas. Okay. Um uh, like I was doing a cross country trip from Miami to, to LA and uh, I did it twice actually. Bro, Texas is fucking huge, dude. Texas it is huge, man. So long, dog. It takes so long to cross it. But what I did love was those little towns. What's uh, Bisbee? No, not Bisbee. Not Bisbee. What's the, uh, is it? Yeah, I think it was Bisbee, Bisbee? Arizona. Bisbee, Bisbee. Bisbee, okay. B -B. So it's a place in Arizona. It was really a f super cool town, bro. Um, but Texas, yeah. I, Austin, dude. I loved Austin, too. Austin. So you've been to Austin, man. You know what? So I took a a trip to Cleveland from all the way from Brownsville, Texas. So that was probably a, I want to say it was like a 30-hour, 30 31-hour drive. And 15 hours of that was just That's Texas, crazy. bro. Holy oh, shit. 15 hours and that, I, I took that with a buddy of mine and yeah 15 hours 15 16 hours is just texas bro because you're no. literally starting from the bottom from like the tip of the border yeah and you're going literally up the entire state but it, it, it's a long drive man it's a it long is, way it is it is and seeing those small like kind of western looking town uh cowboy looking towns was cool bro there's a lot of like abandoned little towns and shit in texas that I like. You, like, you like fish no dude you don't? Well, me neither. Spoiler alert, me neither. <laughs> 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 I'm actually allergic, man. But oh, I, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually allergic. So, uh -huh. uh, but, you know, uh, the Rio Grande Valley and, like, Brownsville, Texas has uh, South Padre Island. I'm sure you've heard of that. South? No, dude. I you've haven't. never heard of South Padre Island? All no. Awesome, man. So, here's the thing, though, man. So, people ask me where I'm from. I'm like, oh, I'm from Brownsville, Texas. Like, oh, where's that from? Uh, oh, you know where uh, Padre Island is? And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's there. <laughs> that's pretty much where I'm from. Yeah, and everyone South recognizes Padre. that. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. South, South Padre Island. No doubt. Cool. But they have a lot of, uh, they have like, a, I mean, it's a good spot to get seafood. And anywhere like near the border is a good spot to get seafood, you know. It's yeah. not, not as crazy as some people make it out to, to see. Oh, you live near the border? Oh, well, it's I, know. I know. I know. We spoke a little about that, but yeah. It's kind of uh, the perception of the border is, is probably not not what it's like at all. Yeah, man. Let me know if you ever hit the Groom Valley, man. I'll definitely tell you the spot. Yeah. No doubt, dude. I'll let you know. I actually, when you mentioned that that uh, wrestling um, league in, uh, in McAllen, I, yeah, that sounds interesting to me. Oh, yeah, def definitely, man. You should, you should check it out, man. I know a, a few of the guys there, man. Uh, cool. great, great people up there, man. Uh, real quick before we wrap up, uh, Robbie, is there any advice you can give uh, to anybody that's maybe dealt with rejection? Um, you know, yeah. you coming from the acting background, uh, I'm sure you've been told no a few times. Um, it's just probably, it's the nature of the business. It's the nature of life. And there's some people yeah. that don't know how to handle it, that think it's maybe the end of the world, or, you know, they feel like they're not good enough. Is there any advice you can give to anyone dealing with that? Yep. My advice is uh, make your own work. <laughs> okay. Do what Jose's doing, bro. You start shit on your own, dude. That's the way to do it. I, I wrote a play while I was in New York um, without any jobs. And I wrote a play and that, that writing that play got me work. You know, the play may never be done again. I don't know, dude. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But the jobs that I got from writing that play, acting jobs, uh, I, can, I can connect writing that play to getting heels, you know. Um, I met a producer because I wrote that play. And that producer eventually introduced me to my manager, you see. So that's why I always say make your own work, bro. It's not about 
It's not about being on Broadway or that play is going to be on Broadway. It's about what the, what doors open because you started to make your own work. You know what I'm saying? Your channel might not get that many views when you start, but eventually you might get a job in a radio and now you've had fucking 10,000 hours of interviews with people and you use that experience. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So make your own work, dude. 110%. That's what I always say. And, and I'm sticking to it, bro. Awesome, man. Oh my goodness. It's, been such a pleasure, Robbie. Uh, thank you for your time. You can catch uh, Robbie Ramos on Heels. That'll debut this summer. Later on, I'm sure we'll get a release date for that. Be on the lookout for Heels starring Stephen Amell. Robbie Ramos will be in that show. Oh, what's your character's name, by the way? Diego Cottonmouth. Oh, Diego Cottonmouth. That's a, that's a legit name. I can't wait. It's, I'm a, sure. legit it's a legit <laughs> name. It's a real so, G yeah. right there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And yeah. uh, Robbie, is there anything you want to tell the audience before we sign off? Nah, that's it, man. Um, I want to tell you that I, I, I thank you for, for having me on bro. And, and for being persistent, that's another thing, right? It's like make your own work and then also be persistent as fuck, man. And, and, uh, and that, that's the only way to make it in this shit and whatever you do. So thank you. De de no, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yes. Being persistent is enough. I get a lot of those questions. How do we get people on the show here on critical condition sports? Got to be persistent. Yeah, that bro. Yeah. Thank you, Robbie, for your time. And to all the audience, thank you for your time. Everyone, I hope you have a safe, great week. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.